Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to combine scroll snapping and motion effects for smooth animations in Divi. Here's the result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to add a brand new page. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to pages, click on add new. We are going to give this page a name. So let's just call this scroll, but you can call it whatever you want. Next, we're gonna click on use Divi Builder. Okay, great. Uh, the next step now is to build this from scratch. So I'm going to choose build from scratch. I'm going to close this for now and then go into our section settings. Now here we need to set our height. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing, and we are going to go to minimum height and set this to 100 VH. Next, we're going to be adding uh, two lines of CSS code. Uh, these lines of CSS code will help us turn the section into a snapping point for the scrolling effect. So I'm going to come over here to advanced and I'm going to go to custom CSS and we need to add this code in the main element. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, if you want to copy this same code, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Okay, so now that we've added this, I'm going to come over here to visibility and we need to set our horizontal and vertical to hidden. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Vertical hidden. Excellent. So the next step now is to start to add our rows. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that my background color here is not there. So I'm just going to set it to transparent or even white. Okay, I'm going to save this. Then next, I'm going to come over here and choose a single column. Now, before we add any modules in here, let's head over to our row settings first, because in here we need to go to our settings. So click here on design and then click on sizing. First of all, we need to activate use custom gutter. We're going to set this to yes, and then we're going to set this to one now the gutter is the space between the columns so we're just going to set them to one so that there's no space between next we are going to set our width and our maximum width to 100 percent so currently it's set at 80 percent set that to 100 and then maximum width 100 great so the next step now is to head over to our spacing because we need to make sure there is no padding so i'm going to come over here set this to zero Activate this change so the same value can be added both to the top and the bottom. Now let's head over to our position and to access position, we need to come over here to advanced, click on position, and we need to set this to absolute. So here where it says position, we need to set this to absolute. There we go. And then we want to set this to a bottom center like that. Great. So now that we've set that, we need to now go into our text module. So I'm going to save this and let us add our text module. So here it is. I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for text, and here it is. Right. So initially it has this dummy text. So we need to get rid of this text. And now let's add a background color by coming over here to background. Click on this plus button. So for my background color, I'm going to add my color like that. So that's just that yellow. Now let's go to our text settings. I'm going to come over here to text and go to line height. And we are going to set this to 1 EM. Now it's time to go to sizing because here we need to set our width to 30%. I'm going to edit here. And now we're going to go to spacing. And on our spacing, we're going to add a top padding of 30% and then save. All right, great. So what we're going to do next is we are going to add another column. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And this time we need two equal columns. We're going to close out of here and then go into our settings, design. And then we're going to go to our custom gutter here. Like we did before, let's set this to one. And then we need to come over here to our width. Now at the moment, it's set to 80 by default. We need to set this to 60 VW. And for our maximum width, we are going to now set this to 100%. Next, let's add our margin. So I'm going to come all the way down here to spacing and we're going to set our margin to 20 VH. Next, uh, let's go back to our content because now we need to target column two. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, design. So what we need here is the padding. So I'm going to click on spacing. So for our top padding, we're going to set this to 2 VH. And for our left and right padding, we're going to set this to 2VW. Now, since the value is the same, I'm going to add it both sides by activating that chain. All right, so I think we're good here. I'm going to save this, save one more time. And on this column one here, we're going to add an image. So I'm going to click on this plus button, search for my image module. 
and select it. I'm going to click on this plus button to add our image. Now I'm using an image that is already in my media library, but in your case, you can upload it from your computer. So the size here is 400 by 400. So make sure you use the same size. So I'm going to click upload. And now here is my image. Now we're going to go to design alignment and we just want to make sure it's left aligned. And then over here on sizing, let's force full width. And then we're going to save. Next, we're going to come over here and add a text module. So I'm going to search for it. And then I'm going to replace this text and paste my own text in here. And we're going to set this text to heading two because we really want this to stand out. All right, great. So now that I have this, let's go to our heading two settings by clicking on design, heading text, making sure heading two is selected. We're going to uh, choose our font and our font here is, is going to be called Anton. And here it is. So for our text size, we don't want to use the default here. Let's use 5VW. So make sure it's VW. So that's looking great. Now we need to add another text module to our second column. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button, and we're going to search for our text module one more time and select it. Next, we're going to delete this text and add our own text in there. And now let's go to our text settings and uh, make for the customizations. So I'm going to click here on design text and we're going to make sure this is set to open sans. So I'm going to search for it and select it. And for our text size, we're going to use 0.8 VW. And for our line height, we're going to set this to 1.8. Now it's time to add our spacing because we need to increase the space here. So let's go to spacing and we are going to add a top and bottom margin. And we are going to set this to 2VW. I'm going to save. Next, we're going to add a button here. So I'm going to search for my button module and select it. So for the button text, you can add whatever text you want in here. And over here, it's important that we add a link. So I'm going to add a blank link for now. But in your case, you need to add a link that uh, goes to whatever page you decide to link to. Next, we're going to come over here to design because we need to customize this button here because right now this is the default button that we get when we install Divi. So I'm going to come over here to button and activate use custom styles for button. All right, so let's start with the text color. So for our text color, I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and add my color. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Okay, so I've got my color here. We also need to add the same color for the border. So I'm going to click on this um, eyedropper tool, add my color. And for my border radius, we're going to set this to one pixel. Now let's uh, add our text size. So I'm going to go back up here and set this to 1VW. Next, let's uh, add our font and we need to make sure we have consistency here. So I'm going to use a font that I've used before. It's called Anton. And we're going to select it and set it to uppercase. Now let's go and do further customizations to our button here and give it some breathing space. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So I'm going to start with padding and give this a top and bottom padding of 1VW. So notice I used this chain because I really wanted to make sure that I add the same value both to the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do the same for left and right, making sure this is VW. I'm going to activate my chain. So now we have more space in our button. Now it's time to add scroll effects to the different elements. So this is what is going to bring our style. So let's save this. So what we're going to do now is open up our text settings in our first column, which is this yellow background. And let's head over to advanced and then go to scroll effects. I want to click here on scroll effects. And the effect that we need here is the first one. It's just a vertical scroll. So here are the settings. First of all, you need to activate it. So this needs to be four, zero and minus four. So that's fine. So we're going to save that. Now we're going to go into our row settings. So here we need to target column one. So we're going to click here on this gear icon, go to advanced, scroll effects. This time we need horizontal. So I'm going to select this, activate it. So for my starting here, I'm going to use minus three. And here we're going to split this and um, set this between 40 and 60%. So I'm going to drag this to 40%. There we go. And then 
this one here needs to be at 60%. Okay, there we go. So you just need to make sure you've got you've got the uh, the setting right. And this also needs to be minus three. And then finally, making sure that this is the middle of the element. Let's go ahead and save. Actually, before we um, go ahead and save, let's go to fading in and out. And let's use this effect as well. I'm going to activate this. And here, what we're going to do is we are going to um, set our starting opacity at zero, middle at 100. So these options here are right. So let's go ahead and save. Now we need to go into column two, advanced, scroll effects. So we are going to do uh, what we did uh, to the first one, uh, which is horizontal. Activate this. This time we're going to set this to three and the last position to three as well. And uh, here we're going to set this to 40 and 60. So I'm going to drag this to 40 and 60. Next, we're going to do our fade in, fade out. I'm going to activate it. So here we're just going to leave uh, the default as it is. I'm going to save that. Save one more time. And this should work. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to save this and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so I'm going to exit. Right, so when I scroll here, you can see that it's working, but we need more content. So what you need to do now is to go back in. So I'm gonna click on Enable Visual Builder and we need to duplicate um, this four times. So let's go one, two, three, four. So now when we save this and exit the Visual Builder, so when I scroll, you can see now that this is working. So all I've done here is just to distinguish these backgrounds. On this one here, I just changed the background color on the section. So that's all you need to do. In your case, change the images, change the text as well, just to match your design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.